Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial. This time it's 28mm and the period is Roman and that's Caesarian Roman from Warlord Games. I've got several tutorials to share with you and I'm starting with a couple of characters that are from probably one of my favourite all time TV series and that's Rome and the characters here are Pulo and Varenus a couple of real hard nuts that just kind of encapsulate the physical madness that was Rome itself. I'm going to be using my standard layering approach, something you'll be familiar with if you follow the channel. If you're new to the channel then you can get a look at how I paint without, in almost all cases, without recourse to washes or dry brushes and it's just building up the layers from a dark undercoat. This tutorial could also be a good guide for how you're going to paint your average legionnaires for the Caesarian Romans as well. Now there's a link at the end of this video to the playlist which contains all of the 28mm historical um, subjects that this is part of and there'll be more and more Romans being added to that. This is going to be the second one and there'll be more getting added in time. So if you subscribe, hit the bell button, you'll see all of these tutorials as they come up. Right, folks, let's get painting. So you can see my starting point here. I've already started to put some paint down and with the layering approach what I've done is I put down the shade colour, the deepest shade colours there's going to be. This is quite often the case where the, everything will be just the one colour but here because I'm going to be using some lighter colours like the white and some darker colours I'm taking the opportunity to put down two shade colours at this point. What I've used so far for the bulk of the figure is my go-to German Camo Black Brown. It's a very very dark colour that doesn't go as far as black so it gives a, a better contrast, a softer contrast than black would give. And then for the white areas I'm going to use a light grey, in this case it's London grey. These are quite small areas so it, it benefits to have a, a deeper contrast in your whites. So I'm using London grey but you could, if you wanted a softer contrast, start with deck tan. Let's now start with the armour. Now I'm taking a non-metallic metal approach here to the chainmail. Um, you could just use metal paint, it works fine, you know like metallic, sort of gunmetal grey, wash of black, dry brush of silver, always works fine. But here I find, especially with large areas such as this, in a layering approach that a non-metallic approach is complementary. So I've started with a layer of German grey. I'm then dry brushing that with London grey. Now when I say dry brushing it's almost like patting the brush down with sufficient paint for it to just create a nice solid layer. It's not so much drawing the brush directly across the surface. I don't want something that looks too dry here. I'm still after a layering approach as much as possible. The highlight for the chainmail is deck tan. I find that's a, a useful kind of highlight for metallic areas. Gives them a little bit of a glint without going white. Now as I said before I'm tying as much as possible just to dab this on so the brush isn't too dry neither is it too wet because we just want this brush to be leaving enough paint for a solid surface that doesn't look too dry. Let's move on to the white of the tunics now. So we've got London grey as a shade colour. We don't want to be leaving too much of that shade colour as we're working here otherwise it's going to look more grey than white when finished. So I'm taking deck tan as the basically the main layer here for the white. It's not quite white, it's a bit darker than off-white but by the time we're finished it's going to be a really good solid white look without having to work with too much white paint because we all know how awkward the pigments are on white paint. Now you see me working this on, it's going to take two coats here folks for most of the layering that we do. It's going to take two coats unless you're working in a very very small area. So be patient. And what I'm doing is I'm blocking in the solid areas of white or deck tan. 
and leaving small amounts of shade, that's the London Grey, in the deepest areas. The first layer of deck tan I use to map out the, the surface so that when I go in for the second coat I'm ready just to firm up the shape, make sure that I'm happy with the amount of shade that I'm leaving. Now I'm just following the sculpt here as we go folks. There's plenty of folds and highlights and so on to guide us and this technique allows you to A follow what's on the figure or if it's flatter and a bit, a bit featureless to actually leave some shade in yourself where you feel it would benefit. So we've got two layers of deck tan down, we've got some deep shade, now we need some highlight and for this I'm going to be using either off-white or white. The choice is yours, there's not much of a difference between the two. Now I'm not going to be using too much highlight here, I'm going to be careful, I'm using a small brush so I'm going to be careful that the paint is wet enough to flow off nice and smoothly but not so wet that it's going to start running across the raised areas and edges that I'm catching here folks. But this white that we're applying in small lines is just going to lift the greyness out to give us an overall white look that will appear whiter as we add darker colours around it. Now let's get on to the cloak. This is the largest area on the figure so I'm going to be using red here because that's a very very Roman colour but in a large area like this folks the colour you choose to use is going to be key to the final look of the figure as you can imagine. So layering once again, layering up from the German camo black brown and I'm using burnt cadmium red as a shade colour. Now I've talked about German camo black brown being the shade colour before but that is like for the deepest area of shade either internal shade that is within the folds of the cloak or external shade which is where the cloak contacts the rest of the figure. So as I'm painting this cloak here I only want to be leaving small amounts of the German camo black brown in the deeper recesses or the longer recesses that perhaps really help define the shape. Elsewhere I want to have a covering of the burnt cadmium red which is actually a really dark uh, colour and you'll see that as we start to add the next main layer, the brighter layer on top of that. And as always folks remember it's going to take you two coats to get this right so don't worry about leaving a semi opaque finish at this point, you're going to come back and add another layer but when you are adding that second layer, especially on a large area, a large surface such as this, try to leave just a little bit of that semi-opaque paint where it meets the German Camo Black Brown. So you've got a transition from the deepest areas of German Camo Black Brown up through a semi-opaque dark red and into the, the dark red itself. But we're only talking very, very fine margins that you'll be able to judge with, you know, with time and practice. Now the main colour for the red is the Vallejo Red, that's what, that's what it's called folks. Uh, hopefully there's not more than one pot of red in the range but that's what you need to look for. So you can see me adding this on as a layer following the map that's been created by the Burnt Cadmium Red and the German Camo Black Brown. So we're layering up from those points. So we want this particular cloak to look more on the brighter side but with lots of depth. That's what we're going to aim for guys and that's what you'll see us uh, working up to. But you know there's, there's so many other things you could be doing at this point for instance. You could simply be using this red here as your final highlight. But for our Varenus and Pulo here we're going for a, a brighter cloak. You know something that's going to look quite dramatic and fiery. So just build up those layers folks as you see me doing here, follow the shape of the figure, try as always to leave the contrast in there, the shade that we've built up and it's going to take two coats once again and bear in mind if you can find those semi-opaque areas that you can leave on the coat of red it's going to help with the transition so you get something softer. It's not easy and it's not always going to happen on every area so just let it happen folks. 
find it with your eye don't try to create it you will see it with practice and no I can leave that little bit there just a little bit semi-opaque I'll just leave the final coat just a bit further up the, the, the fold towards the crease so we've got the the clear form of the cloak visible now folks you know through our shading and our main colours you know the transitions from dark to light you know it's got a nice flow to it but it's the highlight that's really going to make the shape pop especially on the tabletop and what I'm using to highlight this red is quite fiery I am using oranges rather than lighter reds but lighter reds are there if you want a bit more of a flatter less saturated kind of highlighted finish but here I'm using either orange bright orange or orange red so you can see me applying thin lines to the high points and where there's a flatter area of cloak I'll be looking to apply those thin lines of highlight directly between the the dark and the light areas uh, as much as possible there may be transitions in there you want to be careful of but if you can put light against dark you're going to get a very very strong highlight and that's typically possible in this size of figure only where there are flatter areas and be careful as well with the, the paint you're using folks on the brush make sure the brush does not get too dry if you're dragging the paint off the, the brush is too dry it's got to flow off nicely and stay where you've put it for the leggings I'm using green grey it's a fairly unsaturated colour but it's quite bright so it's going to stand out in these relatively small areas on the figure so that we'll be able to see it clearly but it's not going to be something that jumps out too much I'm layering this directly on top of the German Camel Black Brown so that's going to create a really really strong contrast something I would not normally do at this scale but for such a small area there's no real problem I mean it's hard to get um, a benefit of a medium shade in such a small area anyway but just make sure you're just leaving small amounts of that German Camel Black Brown just to demonstrate where the folds are and also of course the external shade between the leggings, the legs and the tunic and to highlight this I'm just going to be using very small lines of splinter camo base it's a sort of a grey colour, sort of medium kind of grey colour but it makes a nice highlight, a nice unsaturated highlight on the base green grey colour here now for the leather on the wrist straps, on the belts on the sandals I'm using German Camel medium brown with a highlight of orange brown now it's got to be a very very small highlight because orange brown is a really strong kind of colour it's really bright but in using that kind of brown instead of a sort of tan kind of colour it makes it stand out differently from any other browns that we may already have painted on the figure and I think it gives a nice worn leathery looking edge to things now on to the bright bronze or even gold areas on the figure with the exception of the helmet we'll come to that later I'm going to use a non-metallic gold approach simple one once again but starting with new wood as a base colour I'm just going to put that as a layer over all of the, the areas that uh, we're painting here and then I'm going to go to the good old sort of uh, staple for this which is Japanese uniform and I'm going to paint a layer over that again with the new wood or, uh, becoming the shade colour and for a sort of metallic glint, metallic highlight I'm going to use a little bit of deck tan it's not quite white uh, but it's nice and bright that's the best way of describing deck tan and just on some high points uh, where the light is going to be hitting these shiny metallic objects now we're nearly there folks so we're on to the skin and I'm going to be using saddle brown as my shade colour here now that's going to be the replacement for the German Camel Black Brown there's not going to be any German Camel Black Brown as internal shade in the, the skin areas 
I will be leaving of course a tiny tiny line of Jimmy Camel Black Brown around the skin so that it's framed nicely against the surrounding detail. Now for the face I'm also going to paint this whole thing with the saddle brown. I'm not going to be worrying about leaving any internal shade in there at all, either in the eyes or in the mouth folks. To finish off any open mouths I just put a tiny tiny little, little wash of red into there and that's, that's darker than the surrounding areas and quite flesh-like. It seems to work fine. Now the saddle brown itself is a quite sort of warm, fleshy kind of shade colour and I find that works best uh, over years of experience. Uh, but there are so many other different colours you can use depending on your own experience and what you want the final result to look like. Before layering any more colours on the skin, I'm going to paint the eyes. This will allow us to correct any mistakes and especially if you're painting a large batch of figures, there's always going to be a little bit of a mistake with the eyes, folks. So using a small brush, making sure the paint's flowing off nicely, I'm going to use off-white or deck tan. Most commonly I use deck tan and I come in from the side and paint a tiny little line. You know, like mo most eyes are going to appear as a little line between the lids and then a thin line down the middle of each eye with some German camel black brown for a simple little pupil. And then I start layering the skin with uh, starting on the face. Now painting the face I typically work down the middle so you've got uh, you've got the brows, you've got the nose, you've got lips, chin and then work out towards the cheeks and to the ear and just you know like make sure that the the layering you're applying gives the impression of a face. If you were blocking in the colour of a face just with like a large piece of crayon or something on a piece of paper you would know what the the main features would be and where they would be take the same approach when you're painting this figure. Now, to a degree on the larger areas, you will need two coats. On the smaller areas, you should be able to get away with one, like on the toes and the heels here. I'm just putting a little blob of paint on and that is going to be enough. But be careful with the larger areas that you're not doing too much, too quick. And as you'll see here, I'm leaving shade where I want there to be muscle tone and shape to the legs. So just as if we were painting a cloak or such likes, I'm going to build that up from the first coat and the first coat is going to be my map towards the completed picture. Here I am adding another layer of the uh, flesh base and I am controlling the amount of shade that's showing, making sure it's just enough to give the shade that I want and not dominate the finished look and put it, on, put it on smooth folks, take your time, semi-opaque areas once again look quite nice if you can preserve any of that and the transitions it will help the finished look. Now on to the highlighting of the skin and I'm going to use flat flesh here, it's a nice bright highlight and we're going to be applying it in just really conservative amounts just to help make the, the shape of all the the features that catch the eye, you know, the features that the eye recognises as a face for instance or as a hand, you know, really make them pop because these things are very familiar to us. We can apply the paint in such a way that it's going to stand out strongly. So you can see for instance on the fingers, I'm painting a line along the fingers, a very small line, a line along the back of the hands and there you go, we've created a hand, we've you know, brought that detail out of the figure. It's the same approach with the face that we took earlier uh, by putting the main layer on, but in this case we're just going to make sure that the highlight is nice and controlled, like on the bridge of the brows, the nose, lips, top of the cheeks, maybe down the side of the cheeks too where they are beside the mouth and we're really going to firm up the, the shape of the face and make it something that's going to be easy for us all to recognise. And where you can, uh, on the larger areas such as the arms or the legs, get that highlight between the darkest and lightest point of the, the main and shade coats for the best contrast. For the swords I'm doing a very basic non-metallic metal here, you know, just a like, tabletop kind of approach. And I've given the swords an undercoat of German grey and it's just purely an undercoat. Now I'm going to take London Grey 
and dark grey as my colours. The London grey is going to be applied to the top edges of the sword, you know, the top of the flat of the sword. And the dark grey is going to be applied to the underside of the flat of the sword. So you, when you're looking at the sword flat on, and then deck tan to paint a line along the the ridge that goes through the middle of the flat of the sword and across the top and the bottom, just for metallic glint. Then a nice simple glaze using a very light blue colour. You could use a dark blue colour as well if you want a darker final look. Uh, just make sure it's not pulling guys anywhere on the figure and draw it out along the length towards the tip. Remember when you lift your brush off a figure that is where most of the paint uh, will remain when you're applying washes and glazes so just control it at that point. Now for the helmets I was asked to use metallic paints for this uh, particular batch of figures so I'm just layering them, layering them up using what I've got available. I don't use metallics very much but I've just taken the same approach here folks. I've got a sort of um, brass colour as an undercoat, a sort of a pot of citadel bronze that I had lying around as the main coat and then gold as a highlight. Uh, just all painted on, layered in the same sort of way, just trying to get some deeper shade areas which you can if you want accentuate with some black and for instance between the the crest and the helmet here I've actually gone, gone back in and painted in some German camel black brown just for a bit of better distinction between those two areas. And there's some bright gold going on for a highlight folk, just applied in the way you would expect, you know, just on the raised areas and any features. I was also asked to do some freehand on shields. Now freehand isn't a strong point of mine folks, but it is still possible to do certain things with freehand that look good as a finished result. They won't necessarily look precise, but they can still look good. So I'm doing a wreath type pattern here. And I'm mapping that out against the, the, the background colour of the shield using German Camel Black Brown. That'll also be a bit of a frame for the colours uh, that we're going to use. Now this kind of process of freehand, where you're going to be painting something that's almost sort of um, geometric in shape, you're, you're really building up muscle memory once you have settled on an approach. So what I've done here at all the various points in the process is and trying to create the sort of interweaved leaves is doing the each wing of the wreath in two halves so I'm going in each half I'm going to take the brush and do a movement with a brush which is I would describe it as being short up and then long down short up and then long down short up and then long down and that way you're going to get the the peak the point at the front trailing down back to the center and then you're going to repeat that up and then down back to the center and that gets you the basic shape that you're after and then you can start to fill in now i'm using a uh, tan yellow for this which is a good base color for anything that you're going to be painting yellow it can act as a shade color but because it's a nice solid pigment it also acts as a good undercoat color if you're struggling to get uh, an opaque finish on your yellows and then to make it pop a little bit more we're going to have some some bright yellow any kind of bright yellow will do just to put in just little lines little highlights on all these little leaf shapes and to finish I'm going to take some German Camo black brown and paint a sort of broken line down the centre of the curve of the wreath on each side and once again that'll just give it a bit more shape you've got your dark against your light so it easily catches the eye and that's us done folks that's us done by Varenis and Pulo two great characters two great figures I have to say I do like these sculpts um, and hopefully you found it interesting and useful and inspire you to do some Romans off your own. So thank you folks for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers out there who follow the channel. And if you'd like to subscribe, please hit the button and hit the bell button. And that means not only are you going to help 
YouTube bring this kind of content to other people who enjoy this hobby, hitting the bell button means we'll definitely see you guys on the next one.